Hello everyone, welcome to this new video in which we're going to test what I think is the sexiest C2 framework. And you'll see why shortly. Let's get started. So I was scrolling Twitter and I and I found a tweet from Cas van Kooten yesterday saying, after almost two years of working on Implant as a personal site project, I'm proud to release it to the public. And uh, from what I saw, the user interface, it looks really cool. So I wanted to test it out. So let's get straight to the GitHub repository. So as you can see, it has many features. We're not going to go into those for now. What we are interested in is though the installation. So it says here that we need to have NIM the client uses NIM and so obviously we need to have NIM and the server is written in Python so we need to have that but there is a um, docker image that is that can be used to generate the NIM plants that that's the stage that could be run on the compromised hosts or to gain initial access so let's uh, take that well before we can do that let's first clone the repository and in the public directory I'm just going to run git clone and then the path and let's cd into an implant now in here you can find that we have the nimplant python file this is the uh, file that's is used to run both the server and to compile the uh, implants and so we can use docker to actually compile those so that would be our command but I'm just going to change the folder the current folder to nimplant. Okay, everything seems fine. We're going to use the compile command inside um, nimplant.py and generate all the artifacts. That would be the DLL, the shellcode, the exe, and then I guess the self uh, deleted binary. We're going to see that. So give it some time. Um, it says here no configuration file found. And that's because we need to use, you need to have a file called config.toml. So I'm just going to rename that to config.toml and rerun it. We're going to go back into that configuration file but for now, we just want to have something that works. Now, for people who don't know what a C2 framework is, C2 stands for Command and Control, and it's basically a post-exploitation framework, meaning um, it allows red teamers or threats or threat actors to persist access, uh, move laterally, and achieve their objectives once they get an initial foothold on a system. This initial foothold could be um, a phishing email asking for the user to run a malicious macro or um, HTA file or maybe a shortcut that points to a lol bing, anything that could be used for execution. Once the attacker has an initial foothold on the system, um, they could use this um, access with the C2 frameworks to advance and achieve their objectives. And during the execution phase in a um, phishing attack, for example, payloads generally call back home to the server, which is nothing but this C2. So that's what we're going to do now. We are generating the uh, payloads that once clicked upon or run will connect back to the C2 server. And from there we can run any commands that we want. So hopefully this brief explanation gives you a general overview for people who don't know what a C2 is. 
So it's taking uh, some time to generate and compile the payloads. And that's because I'm also running a screen recording at the same time. But generally, it doesn't take much. So the benefit of using Docker to compile the uh, payloads is you don't need to have an implant installed. Uh, I mean, you don't have to have uh, NIM installed. But if you want to run the server, in this case, you need to have Python and the requirements installed. Maybe we could have a version for the server as well. We, I mean, I might uh, contribute to the project by including a Docker file for the um, server as well. But for now, let's just uh, work with what we have. Okay, so it says here that you can find the compiled binaries in client bin. So if we uh, ls the contents, you can see that we have a bin, a dll, an exe, and a self-delete exe. So these are the payload that will phone back home. And thinking about that, I actually forgot to specify the address to which um, these payloads will phone home to. So inside the Nimplant folder, uh, we can see that the uh, config toml, I'm going to open it with notepad. And so here are the different um, configuration fields. And one of them is the host name. So we are just going to say, hey, we want you to connect to the local host. I'm running this uh, in a test machine, so I don't bother compromising the same machine where the server is running. This could be any host name um, that matches the redirectors that you have deployed for the red team infrastructure. So with that said, let's rerun our compile command. And hopefully we will have some payloads that should phone home once they are run. Okay, now we have the new generated payloads. If we go to client bin and try to analyze it, scan it with defender. It says here no current threads, but uh, don't count on it. It's only a matter of a short time before Microsoft starts flagging it. So it's not really meant for AV bypass. Plus the current configuration, which we're going to see later in a later video, uh, is not really configured to be stealthy. So uh, with that said, let's go to the uh, documentation. To run the server, you can go to the directory of Nimplant and then run Python Nimplant server. So we are in the server. Um, the first thing we need to do is pipe3 install the uh, requirements under the server directory. Install dash f. I already installed them, so now it's just a matter of running Python and then implant server. I'm just going to name it local. So it says here that the management server interface, which is web-based, is located here. Let's go fetch it. And we land on the sexy user interface. It's a really cool user interface. I personally like it. And I think that all folks in the security industry haven't seen any user interface better than this for any C2 framework. Covenant maybe, but not as sexy as this one. So you can see here the name server is local and it's running on this uh, host, local host, etc., etc. Now we don't have any implants but that's gonna change uh, if everything goes well. And we suppose that somebody um, falls for the phishing trick and runs our DLL, or if they're dumb enough, run the EXE. We can indeed see that we have a new NIMP plant. If we 
click on it we have the console and we have the tab for information so it's running under the process nimplant.exe there's no process injection going in on here and it seems that we don't have the possibility to change that do we we have just the kill dates the user agent uh, yeah so we don't have the possibility to specify a parent process or a child process but if we type help here we get a list of the things that we can do cool now I wonder if I can run something um, like download yeah why not so download there's no tab completion but it has it's a user interface so you can click on that option and then we specify the path let's try um, like downloading a dummy file like C users uh, nimplant client bin and nimplant.exe why not nimplant.exe run the command and successfully downloaded the file to the uh, servers directory under downloads and the name so if we go to downloads however we see that indeed we have this file here that we can download right from the server through the API all right what are the other commands that we can do I mean we could uh, run the list of processes with the ps command and here we have a list of all the processes can we actually perform some kind of process injection so I'm interested in testing the shell inject here which says here loads raw shell code from a file and injects it into the specified process using dynamic invo invocation so the syntax is ch ch inject and then the uh, target process ID and the local file path um, let's uh, let's take for example this one 2012 and then the path uh, that would be the shell code from the generated payloads for example here we can say we want to run this shell code just to test if this shell code works nimplant.bin and hit enter there is no auto scrolling but hey it's a web interface so injecting shell code into the remote process oh it failed I think we don't have the enough permissions uh, there's a cool feature which allows you to go back to the uh, old commands by just hitting the up arrow which I think is cool um, let's inject into this one okay it seems that it worked but did we have any new implants yes we get another one this time from conhost with the chosen process ID so it seems that it's uh, working uh, as expected the user interface is definitely slick and um, I can't wait to explore this even more and see what we can do to customize it and play with its configuration I hope you do too and uh, if you find um, interesting cool tricks then don't hesitate to drop me a comment when I'm done with these I can simply type kill and let's do the same for the second one and off they go perfect see you in another video as always stay curious keep learning and go find some bugs